a moment, you are going to hear the voice of a man who will tell you some tremendously important facts. Welcome to the Reality Revolution. This is Brian Scott, and I am so excited. Today, I finally got Bree Seeley for the podcast. I had the wonderful opportunity to have Bree Seeley on the Large Sums of Money Reality Con 3 conference that we recently had. And I learned so much. And this is an important topic that I think is mandatory for this podcast. Recently, we've talked a lot about prosperity, abundance, bringing wealth into your life. And I strongly and fervently believe that the primary way in order to do that is through entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is one of the key goals. And so I had brought Bree Seeley into my conference to talk about entrepreneurship. I learned so much. I had to bring her on and interview her even further. Bree Seeley is a bespoke business designer who works with both established and emerging entrepreneurs to create highly profitable businesses through consistent revenue creation. Bree uses an inside out approach combining hypnotherapy with custom strategy to help you to create long term sustainable success on your terms. Welcome to the Reality Revolution, Bree. I cannot even tell you how freaking excited I am to be here with you today. Uh, I am a longtime listener of the Reality Revolution. In fact, I frequently put on the large sums of money meditation in the shower and when I'm cooking dinner. I'm sure my boyfriend thinks I'm absolutely nuts, but I hear your voice in my head all the time. So I am so honored to be here, Brian. <laughs> I'm super honored. And before we start, I love those glasses. Such a cool glasses design. They're kind of like an infinity symbol. A little yeah, bit. Yeah, that's what I was, I was. I love it. Yeah. So uh, I meet a lot of people that come to me and say, Brian, I'm, I'm really struggling with my finances and I don't really know what to do. And I say, have you ever, you know, tried to start your own business? Oh, I would never do that. Uh, you know, you're not, I'm not the person for an entrepreneur. Okay. Uh, so there is a block. I find with a lot of people where they they absolutely refuse to even embrace the idea that they can do more than make money from some job that they're working at. And I want to un, I want to dissolve this block. So please help me and explain to me how you got into entrepreneurship and why it has done so much for you. Yeah, this is a common one I see. In fact, my entire TED Talk, my TED Talk was called From Wages to Wealth. And it is that process that journey of going from this paradigm where we have to have wages in order to make money into this idea that we are the creators of our wealth. So it has been a long journey for me. My mom was an entrepreneur. And as much as, you know, I learned from her, I love my mom so much. She's an amazing, strong, just incredible woman. She still despite having businesses for well over 20 years, believed that as an entrepreneur, you'd never take home a paycheck a day in your life. So I looked at her lifestyle and was like, I love the lifestyle of an entrepreneur, but I don't want to, I'm not a struggling artist. Like that is not, that is not my lot in this lifetime. I am uninterested in that. So I guess I have to get a job. So I got a job straight out of grad school and then started an accidental business on the side. Uh, my bachelor's and master's are both in fashion design. So I began my own fashion label in 2007, along with having a full-time job. And I hung on to that belief I had been taught that as an entrepreneur, you'll never take home a paycheck a day in your life for the next 13 years. Wow. So for the first 13 years, my business, my businesses were generating money, but like I wasn't paying myself. I put myself on salary for the first time in my entrepreneurial journey in 2020. And it is only because I was doing that mindset work to shift my paradigms. And I will say my first business, it sustained itself, but I racked up a lot of debt with that business. When I transitioned into this business in 2015, I shifted everything. And it was through kind of claiming that ability that I had to create wealth for myself. Within nine months, I'd created my first six figures in business without even trying. I had just followed some insights I had in meditation. And so the journey that I've been on is really that empowerment journey of detangling the stuff, the status quo stuff that we're taught that you have to have a job in order to survive 
You have to have someone else give you a wage in order to, you know, make money in order to pay your bills, all of these things, and really detangling it to see the truth and, you know, the reality underneath all of that, which is I'm the creator of my wealth. So I can choose to do it through a wage, but that means that then I'm limited by what someone else is willing to pay me. Versus if I'm an entrepreneur, I can go out and sell five of my programs tomorrow or one of my programs tomorrow. And like, I created that. I have control over how much or how little I bring onto my plate and therefore how much money I make, how much I charge, et cetera, et cetera. So the one of the big blocks that I get from people is, you know, Brian, I would love to be an entrepreneur. It's just so expensive. There, I don't have the money to start it up. There's a there's a concept a lot of people have that in order to start a business, they need hundreds of thousands of dollars. They need to have a rich uncle that's going to come along. They need to have some special deal. So only people that entrepreneurs are just got lucky and they got, you know, they mortgaged their house to start their business. And uh, I really want to destroy this belief. Anybody can start with nothing in the bank right now as an entrepreneur, right? Absolutely. When I started this business, now it's a little different if you're talking a product business versus a service business, right? Like having a fashion business was very expensive. I had to buy fabric, do manufacturing, all of these like expensive, costly things before I could even sell a piece of clothing. When I transitioned into this business, which is much more aligned because my top core value is freedom, all I needed was a laptop. And I already had one of those. And actually a website. I already had one of those too. I just had to switch it from fashion to, you know, coaching. So I would say we are at a very, very fortunate time in our world's history in that, I mean, anyone listening to this has access to the internet. Anyone listening to this has the ability to start something. You, if you are listening to this, you have a skill or a talent, or a gift that is valuable. Now, you might not see it as valuable because it comes easily to you, but there are people out there that it doesn't come easily to, people out there that don't have the time. You know, I'm getting ready to expand my team massively, not because I can't do it, but because there's so much on my plate right now that it is more valuable for me to hire someone with the, that expertise and those gifts than it is for me to do it myself. So you have gifts, you have skills that other people find valuable. And it's just a matter of starting to put those out there, figuring out who finds value in those, pricing it accordingly, and taking daily consistent revenue generating actions to be filling your business with leads, and revenue. Now, another consistent block that I get is I didn't go to business school. This is complicated. I need to get a lawyer and attorney. It's not something it's just, it's going to take me too much time to learn how to do it. There's so many hoops. I got to jump through the bureaucracy. So terrible, all the licensing, all that stuff. Somebody has told them a story or at some point in time, they've told themselves a story and they use that story to block themselves from starting a business. It's not that hard to start a business and it's not that complicated, right? My my education, I just said it, is in fashion design. <laughs> right. And when you go to when you go to art school or even I studied in Italy, right? When you go to schools for a craft, even I just talked to a woman who's a real estate uh she's getting her real estate license. When you go to schools like that, they don't teach you how to build a business. So you, here's the good news though, you can learn how to build a business, right? Like there are people like me out there that that's what I do day in and day out is I teach people how to start businesses or how to grow established businesses. So you, as long as you have a skill set, can learn entrepreneurship. It's just like learning any other skill set. You don't need to go to business school to know. In fact, I will tell you, most of the business school curriculums out there don't teach you how to be an entrepreneur. So you can go waste years and dollars and time and all of this stuff going to business school. Honestly, it's not going to help you. It'd be You'd be much better off hiring someone who can actually help you take the steps 
and developing up your idea, your marketing, your unique selling proposition, all of those things. And it doesn't have to take you, you know, tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars and four years to get done. Uh, the like the program I have to help new entrepreneurs is six months long and you're launching your business in month four. You're starting to make revenue in your business in month four. So it's the the advent of technology and the the resources and the apps and the programs and the systems that are available now, even from eight years ago when I started, make it so easy. So all of these like mindset things that you've brought up, I would encourage anyone who's having these or any other ones to really start diving into the stories you're telling yourself and finding proof or reaching out to people like Brian and I who can help debunk those for you because it has never been easier to start a business and to start a business without capital than it is right now in our world's history. I really wanted to explore as a fellow entrepreneur, the spirituality of entrepreneurship. Now I go yes. back to my my father who was a veterinarian and the joy that I saw on his face when he opened up his own animal hospital and it was his own. And he, he, he said, Brian, I don't care how much money I make. I'm free. I'm free. I can do whatever I want. I don't have a boss that tells me what to do. And it allows you time to explore your own spiritual nature. It gives you the tools to, un to, to create and understand yourself. And it's been a very powerful motivator. I believe people that are stuck in nine to five jobs, which end up being nine to seven jobs, uh, they don't even have the time to, to, to ponder the creator, to understand the nature of reality because they have to you know, get on that, pre on that assembly line or whatever it is that they're doing. I'm not diminishing what they're doing. What they're doing is important, but, th but there is something spiritual about it beyond just the time. Tell me about your experience and the spiritual nature of entrepreneurship. Honestly, what entrepreneurship has done has brought me closer to God, spirit, universe, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Because like I referenced in the beginning, it has turned me into the ultimate creator. And that is the purpose of God, spirit, universe, creator. It like is creation. And so... I'm a, I'm allowed to create new programs, create new relationships, create new conversations, create new social media, create like my job is to be a creator, create new talks, create new books, create new, all of those things. And so for me, entrepreneurship has been the most spiritual path I've ever taken in my life. Yeah, I've done all sorts of things. I've been to the drum circles, the sound baths, the <laughs> meditations. I'm getting ready to go meditate um, in April for a week. Uh, I've gone to shamans, to healers, to Reiki. To I have literally done it all except drugs. I'm not. I'm not a drug person. I know that there's a place and time for it. I, I have not yet ventured down that road, but. Um, you know, there's so many different ways to connect with that energy of spirit and entrepreneurship has been the one that has taken me the deepest. It is the path that has transformed me the most, that has brought me closer to that act of creation, which I mean, literally is the basis of God and the universe. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm grateful every day to be doing this because for me, it's, you know, we can get deep into this or not. I believe that every single human on this earth is Jesus, right? Like we are all the son slash daughter of right. the creator. And so I get to be that creator all day, every day in my business. And I get to create fun things and content and, and insights, but also wealth. For me, it really greases the wheels of manifestation. If I'm sitting in a job where I make 5,000 a month and I'm saying, I am abundant, I am wealthy. At what point, what opportunities does the universe, God creator have to provide that abundance? 
they might pre- hey, they're, they're, hey over here you can maybe do this but the signals are harder once i'm 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 an entrepreneur, the opportunities become available. I have a new endless. customer that calls me up. They're endless. Um, it makes it so much easier for the universe to provide those opportunities for abundance. And there is a freer flow of opportunity and experience that occurs. I am not saying that you, if you're not an on, if you're not an entrepreneur, that you're not spiritual or that you can't manifest. I'm saying it greases the wheels. You're driving a Lamborghini and ma- manifesting as an as an entrepreneur, and you're driving a broken down station wagon if you're doing it any other way. You can still get to the same point. Um, you might have to, you know, get some oil changes and get some machine work done along the way. <laughs> well, and the way right? I see it is that if you are an employee and you're just relying on this one pathway to bring you the abundance that you're looking for. It's just, it's such a harder pathway. You're literally taking all of the powers of creation available to you and narrowing it down to one single stream. Versus if you're an entrepreneur, like we were talking earlier, you can put out a new meditation, a new workshop, a new program, a new, like literally the opportunities are endless. I went to a meeting a few weeks ago and I was talking with this woman about something completely different. And at the end, she looked at me and she goes, so in the next meeting, I want to talk about you becoming um, the person that becomes the consultant for the entrepreneurs that we're investing in. And I was like, oh, I didn't even know that was an option. Like, okay, thanks. So like literally this door opened up that I couldn't even see at the time. Whereas if you're an employee, there's only one door. I have a million doors available to me and either I can see them and start manually opening them myself, or I trust that if one is meant to open, the universe is going to go and it's going to open it for me, even if I can't see it in that moment. It's so true. I, I see people, you end up becoming literally dependent on, and oftentimes a single person, your boss yeah. is employing you and and you are dependent on the whims and, and, and it, maybe that your boss gets sick. Somebody else comes along and says, "Oh, we don't need you." And so it's you're you're not praying to the creator. You're you're praying to this boss. This like, "Oh, please, I'm going to please you." And then everything my um, suddenly my source is is my boss or the corporation that I'm working for, and and it takes away the the fact that I am the source. And and yes. that's the the really powerful thing that I've come to grips with. Oh my gosh, this is so good. Like this is one of my soapboxes because. You know, I even look at when was it? It was a few years ago that like what Toys R Us just like shut down overnight exactly. and em- employees that had been with them for 30 years, not only lost their jobs, they lost their entire retirement, the whole thing gone in an instant. And so, so many people have been, we've been conditioned to this idea that having a job is secure and being an entrepreneur is insecure or not secure. Right. And the truth is that I have more faith and trust in my ability to create security for myself than I would ever put in the hands of another person, right? We look at WeWork went under overnight. Mm -hmm. Facebook last year just laid off, what, 12,000 people overnight? Elon Musk goes into Twitter, fires the entire staff, Right. right? Like, talk to me about security because that to me is not secure. I am my security. I don't want to rely on someone else to have to like me enough to keep me and pay me when I can just make it happen on my own. And I want to talk to those people. There's there's someone listening that's making 500,000 at some company right now. And their first thought is I'm comfortable. This is good. And you bet it is. You can still be an entrepreneur. I'm not telling anybody to quit their job. You can you do not have to quit your job. You can you, you can list something right now on eBay. You're an entrepreneur. You can sell you can sell some cookies on the corner. You're an entrepreneur. It, it really it starts with you just declaring, "I am an entrepreneur," and creating an identity around the fact that I make money for myself, not for the company or anything else. It's an it's a shift in identity. It really begins with that, right? Well, and, and, you know, my question would be, okay, so you have a $500,000 a year salary. That's great. What else are you giving up? Are you you giving up your freedom? Are you having to work? You know, not, not to mention like the nine to five we were talking about, but like 
6 a.m. till 10 p.m., right? Like I lived in New right. York for, I, I saw what happened with those super top level CEOs. You're missing your kids' baseball games. They don't even see you for dinner, much less, you know, on the weekends. Like, okay, so yeah, you're making money, but what does that quality of life look like? And if making money comes easily to you, why not make it for yourself and develop a quality of life that's going to allow you to live what's important to you and live your values rather than having to sacrifice that stuff to chase a dollar that's making you unhappy in the long run anyways. And of course, then, well, at least I have a really good healthcare package, right? That's one. That's the one, the classic that I get. And and, and still, even then, you can still get good health care anywhere that you're at. It, it, it does not requirement on your job. Yes, you can get a pretty good health care deal, but you actually make more money and have you. there's other options available, right? Absolutely. I have taken care of my own health care for um, at least a decade. Um, I fill mm -hmm. my own retirement accounts like I, you know. I have set myself up so that I'm now an employee of my company. I'm actually starting a second company this year, and I will be the founder and CEO of both companies, drawing salaries from both companies, having both companies contributing to my retirement accounts. Like the company pays for the healthcare. Like it just gets rolled into the expenses that you have. And then guess what? It all becomes a tax write-off at the end of the day as well. It's truly amazing. So um, you teach courses and you also help with the psychological aspect um, with, with hypnotherapy, because a lot of times it really does come down to our beliefs. Yep. And I, I mean, even people, the gurus that I meet, me, mentors that I meet, I struggle. We we all, it's, it's part of the game. You'll, you'll hit roadblocks and then you overcome that mental. Um, so what is, what, what techniques have, have worked for you to change your mindset? along the way when you can encounter financial blocks? Hypnotherapy is the biggest tool that I have found. And I actually got certified in hypnotherapy because I received it. And when I received it, I actually doubled my revenue. And so uh, I then decided I needed to start practicing it. So the way that I teach entrepreneurship is from the inside out. And similarly to like what we were talking about, the spiritual aspect of it, you have to evolve yourself on the inside in order to manifest new things on the outside. Your subconscious has to be in alignment. Your vision has to be in alignment. Your beliefs, your feelings, everything has to be in alignment on the inside in order to create different results on the outside. So hypnotherapy is the thing that I use and it's what I do is a month long hypnotherapy. Uh, we do the reprogramming session where we get into your subconscious. What is the programming that's in there right now that's causing the results that you're currently getting? Then we go in, we shift the paradigm, the meaning around those memories, and then we insert new programming into it. What I liken it to, you're familiar with hypnotherapy, but what I liken it to is like an op operating system upgrade. So you you all know when you get the the little notification on your cell phone that says, you know, it's time for an iOS up to upgrade, you like hit the button, right? We unfortunately don't have buttons on us. Maybe that's coming in the future, but so far <laughs> no such luck. And so basically hypnotherapy is my quote unquote button to help people upgrade their operating system. So maybe at first you upgrade your uh, operating system to $100,000 a year, and then you master that and that becomes super easy for you. Then maybe you wanna go to $500,000 a year. And just like you were saying, even those of us that have been doing this for a long time, when we have upgrades, we still face resistance as well. So when you're going from say 100 to 500, 500 to a million, whatever, there's still those upgrades in the operating system that have to happen so that your programming is aligned on the inside with what you're creating on the outside. This is a common pattern in, in all the businesses. I wanted to ask you about this because I, I always face this at some point in any business, my, my book business, uh, everything. There's a point where I can make more money, but it will require me to work um, a lot harder. And there's a little part, voice in my head, I don't want to work. I just want to go watch TV. And if I listen to that voice, 
Um, and then, then I will naturally just, I start getting less sales. Like if I embrace, cause it, it seems like at the beginning and it's never a, a continuous thing. You always figure out a way to make the work easier at the beginning of any business. It's going to be harder. You're going to have to do more work. It's going to take more time and you embrace it. You say, thank you for the sale. Thank you for the business. And if I embrace it, there's a little point in time where I say, if, if I say, I don't want to, I don't like this hard work. It's, it's difficult for me. And the universe says, okay, we, we won't give you any, any any more of that. So uh, do you notice this pattern? Like at the beginning of the business, you're always going to be faced with having to do some extra work. Yeah. It's not permanent, but there it, you, 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 you need to embrace the difficult and hard work at the beginning of the business, or you are pushing away future sales. Let's use a metaphor to illustrate this. Cause I think this perfectly illustrates it. Mm -hmm. When you have a plot of land, and you want a house on it, building the house takes a lot of work at the beginning, yes. right? You have to lay the foundation, set the two by fours, do the things, put the roof on, you know, insulation, sheetrock, roofing, blah, 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 right? Like there's just a lot of work that comes with building something from nothing. When nothing exists, you got to put work in to put something there. Right. But once the house is built, you have like maintenance, right? Or you might want to do like extra projects. Like right now we're getting rid of our shed and we're going to put a new shed in. Um, but for the most part, like the maintenance of a house, once it's built, is fairly relatively easy. I mean, you know, we put some time into cleaning it. We're just like doing, redoing some grout work and like filling in some caulking right now, like little things. But that's exactly how business is as well. You have nothing to begin with. Well, you you got to build it first mm -hmm. and then the maintenance is easier or you build it and you bring on an expert to help you understand how to create systems, how to create operations so that it can start running more easily without you or on its own so that you can scale. I had a client last year uh, go from, she worked with one school, she was doing $40,000 a month. We tripled her operations so that she could work with three schools and do $120,000 a month. And we had to go in and set up some operations because it would require her to bring on more staff, have you know more consistent streamlined paperwork processes. But we did it and she was able to bring on those two new schools, I think six months earlier than she had planned because we streamlined those operations, right? It was already built. Mm -hmm. But in order to duplicate it, we didn't want to rebuild it. We wanted to streamline it. So absolutely, there's work that goes with building a business up front. Mm -hmm. And then you get into kind of like the daily repetitious stuff. Right. You systemize, you put in operations, it becomes easier. And then it can start working for you rather than you working for it. Um, but then you decide to do something new going to take some elbow grease again to build that new thing and, and then it you enters your mind at the beginning like oh it's going to be like this forever it's not mm -hmm. um it's not like your other job this is not how it works every day you're setting the groundwork and you're making things easier every day right yeah so you have encountered a lot of entrepreneurs on the way what's what's the biggest block that you encounter uh, along the way that to help them overcome in particular. Here's what's so funny. I hear a lot of people online talking about like the fear of failure. All of my entrepreneurs aren't scared of failure. Mm -hmm. We've all failed before. We can fail again. It's not a big deal. Most of them are afraid of success. Yes. They are more afraid of success than they are of failure. And it stops them in their track. It paralyzes them. They procrastinate. They know their vision, they don't take action towards it, and they spin their wheels for years and years and years and years. And a lot of it is this fear of surpassing the people in their life, um, out earning their spouse, their friends, their parents, um, having people, friends disown them. Um, I even had this, my best friend in 2017, when I decided I wanted to aim towards a seven figure business. Uh, called me up out of the blue and told me I was a narcissist and that she couldn't be friends with me anymore. And so it's a very real fear that people have around wanting to be successful and wanting to make 
you know, more money wanting to get out of, I lost my best friend from college because I set out on a path to create my reality and she's still complaining about hers. You know, like Mm -hmm. it's, it is, it can be a very real thing. Um, But the thing that I personally have had to go through and what I try to encourage my entrepreneurs to to go through as well is that anyone that's meant to stay with you is going to be with you. The right people are not going to abandon you because you've decided to create the life of your dreams. And anyone that does decide to, you can keep them as an acquaintance or you can move on from the relationship. No hard feelings, just like, oh, this doesn't fit any longer. It's like putting a square peg in a round hole. It just doesn't fit. So best wishes. And I'm not going to sacrifice my dreams for someone else's comfort. It's it's another huge recommendation. If you can just have one or two friends that are also entrepreneurs, or at least I have some friends that are not really entrepreneurs, but are so entrepreneurially minded. When I throw an idea at them, they're they're with it. They're excited. They're supporting me. And, you know, that's what, you know, Napoleon Hill talked about the mastermind. Yep. It really does help you to have, I say five, two to five solid friends. We become like the people we hang out with and talk to on a regular basis. That's why I like to talk to people like Brie. But, you know, if if I am hanging out with Brie more often, then my life is going to reflect a lot of what Brie has in her life. People don't understand this. They're grinding in their lives and they have Eeyore over here and Weiner over here and telling them how terrible it is. And then they say, Brian, my life's so terrible. I wonder why. I wonder why. And especially in entrepreneurship, when you when you're going through a stage where you need ideas, support and belief from other people. Yeah, I am. So two things. One, I surround myself with the same. Like I Mm -hmm. always have some sort of mastermind or group of friends or colleagues. Um, I have hosted many a brunch over the last several years of just the most powerful female entrepreneurs I know in whatever city I'm in at the time. Um, And also every single thing I do with my clients, I incorporate some form of community into it. Because what I do find is a lot of a lot of people that are becoming especially first time entrepreneurs are breaking generations of wage paradigm stuff. And so it's really difficult to break out of that wage paradigm if you don't have people around you that think like you and believe like you. If people around you are constantly telling you like, oh, you should just go back and get a job, you're going to start doubting yourself. You're going to start thinking that that's the reality you need to go after. So I try really hard. I do my best, whether it's the new entrepreneurs program, established entrepreneurs, even my private clients get thrown into my membership community. Um, I'm launching a women's conference this year. That's going to come with a year long membership to my online community. Like having the right people on your side is absolutely a key element to success in entrepreneurship. Uh, one thing that uh, a common theme um, on that I've had to face and, and sort of understand and watch with my videos, I have a very spiritual channel and I talk about money at the same time. So I always, every video, and I will have one if I look at the comments here, there's going to be somebody that says money is evil. It's, it's satanic. Uh, I, I had a comment in my Facebook group. The reason you're facing so many dark energies, Brian, is that you've been talking about money too much on your channel. And and, and 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 like you said, it's narcissistic. So there is a commonly socially held belief that goes into the Bible and for many people in their family beliefs that money is the root of all evil, that that you know money doesn't grow on trees, that it's this terrible thing that uh, and so I I have found when I meet somebody and they're struggling spiritually and I say, you know, you need to make some money first so that you can feel comfortable and you're not in a survival mode all the time. And then we can start talking uh, about the spiritual stuff because right now you you can bear, you're worried about your next meal. And so that we have to come to grips. We live in a capitalist world. We don't live in a Star Trek world, though I would love a post-money world. We don't live in that. Maybe in my next incarnation, I would love that. Sure, I would love to explore that. But we're in this world, so we have to embrace the game that we're in. And so there's no way that all money can be evil or anti-spiritual or or satanic. 
So let's address this. Is it, you know, we talked about the spirituality of money in entrepreneurship, but it's another side of it. Why is it so deeply held that money is this evil thing? Well, so I'll first ask, like, why do you think this became mainstream? Like it became mainstream mm -hmm. because when people have money, they can't be controlled. When we, yes. when all of our basic needs are met, we don't need to rely on the powers that be, right? We have, we then have the power. So I, you know, I try not to be a conspiracy theorist, and at the same time, <laughs> like, why do you think these beliefs have been implanted into our world? I look at, and honestly, I look at, I try to, sometimes I struggle, but I try to look at everything through the lens of neutrality. I firmly believe that everything on our planet is neither good nor evil. Everything on our planet can be used for good or evil. Mm -hmm. But everything is neutral until we assign meaning to it. So if money is a necessity in our world, is it beneficial for you to assign the meaning that it's evil to it? Not really, because you're cutting yourself off at the knees and preventing yourself from thriving. So why not then see money in a good light? Have a lot of bad people had a lot of money throughout the years? Yeah, they mm. have. Have a lot of really great people had a lot of money and done a lot of really great things throughout the years? Yeah, they have. There's examples of both. So mm. personally, I'm going to choose to do good things with my money. I can amass a lot of it, which means that I then get to have a lot more impact. I get to do a lot more things. I get to help free a lot more people. I, I mean, it becomes unlimited and endless. So I personally, like, I don't want to amass a million dollars just to like have a million dollars and like sit on it, you know, like Scrooge McDuck style, right? Honestly, I don't really see my lifestyle changing that much when I hit that mark. Like, you know, don't get me wrong we could use one more bedroom in our home. Just one, just one more bedroom. <laughs> Currently sharing an office. Sometimes it gets a little dicey. We use, we use a house with just one more bedroom, but I'm not going to be going out buying a McMansion that's worth millions or whatever. Right. I'm, mostly, honestly, because I don't care to clean it or pay someone else to clean rooms that I don't <laughs> use. Um, but again, that's like, I could afford to do those things, choosing not to. Because I'd rather do more impactful, beneficial things with my money. And that's a choice that all of us get. Mm -hmm. So if making money is a non-negotiable in this world, why not choose to do it and do it for good rather than do it and use it for evil or condemn it for being evil? I don't know. Yeah. And the number one, the number one thing that you said in our conference, and I agree with you, is, is naps. <laughs> and I can, and I can, and I can sit and watch if I want to, I can go and sit down and I can watch Star Wars right now in the middle of the day. And nobody can tell me anything because it's my choice. I can sit down and watch it and I can do and I have that choice or I can go and take a nap. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm a huge napper. I think it started. My mom used to run a daycare when I was in high school. And so all the kids would go down for naps. And so I was like, well, I might as well nap too. And then, you know, throughout college and all the things I'm a, I'm a big napper and I have a kitten too, who just looks at me and she just purrs a little bit. And I'm like, oh, let's go cuddle. We could go take a nap. Right. And then if I were to sit down and take a nap, if I, when I was working at General Motors, I'd be out. Fired. Fired. Exactly. <laughs> so th that's the amazing thing. I only am asking people to embrace the the infinite possibilities of yourself. And in order to do that, in order for me to accomplish my goal of seeing everybody that wealthy and free, then you, I believe strongly to embrace the idea of being an entrepreneur. I ask you a really far out there question because it's something I asked in my book and, and, and it, there's even a block, even for all of us. Can you envision a world in which everyone is wealthy? Everyone, every single person the person on the street, everyone is wealthy. 
And if you can't, why not? Tell me what you believe. I definitely can from my perspective. I don't know if it will ever happen on this plane mm. um, because of other people's perspectives. Uh, but I, I mean, maybe I'm naive, but I can totally envision a world where every single person, not even that we all have to be wealthy, but every single person's needs are met and that we have the freedom to create what we want. Some people want a Ferrari. I personally have driven in Ferraris. They're really uncomfortable. <laughs> I really, are. I really it's like my Volkswagen, true. right? <laughs> Actually, I own a Vespa. Like I love my Vespa. I don't, <laughs> I don't need a Ferrari because I just like my Vespa and my Volkswagen. So, um, you know, I, I don't know if everyone has to be a millionaire, No, but, but... I think that everyone deserves to have their basic needs met and everyone deserves humanity. And I think that if there were some way for the world to have the ability to support people, for all of us to support each other, for all of us to, I don't know, I, I, I would love to see a world like that. Well, we live in it, you know, in a world where dystopia is the main thing that we're told. We're constantly told there's a dystopia in the future. So at least somebody out there has to say, no, there is a utopia. It, 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 I'm not, I'm, yeah, I might be talking out of my butt, but it's true. I believe I create my reality. And there is a very deep part of me that does believe that we can live in a world of absolute prosperity for everyone. It may not happen in my lifetime, but I want to put the idea out there. I want it to yeah. be floating with all the other dystopians. It, 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 I don't want, I, I want there to at least be that alternative in people's minds so that it's an acceptable possibility. Yes, right now it's the 0.01% that has all the money. And, you know, there's a spiritual question to that. There's so, there's there there's a, a spiritual question to all of humanity and our natures in ourselves and all of it with that. I think we are learning about ourselves because of this pattern. It's a pattern uh, and, and it doesn't necessarily have to be so. And we need to ask the question, why? Why have we created a world in which there is that? And does it have to be so? I don't think it has to be. And, and really, truly, you know, thought is, as we know, the first step for realities to change. And mm -hmm. so the more that we can get people thinking in this term of utopia, like that is just going to continue compounding on other people thinking about utopia. And at some point, who knows, maybe the trajectory of the earth will change. Uh, right. You know, I, I, I have been very spiritual for a very long time. So a lot of the things um, about, you know, the new earth, 5D, all this stuff, um, not to get political, but even some of the political things that have happened, you know, I hold on to the hope that these things are rising to the surface so that we can see them and clear them out and choose otherwise. And again, maybe I'm Pollyanna, maybe I'm delusional, I don't know, but I really try to hold on to this deep belief that everything happening right now is happening to get us closer to a point of utopia. And it's really important, especially as an entrepreneur, you can end, you can get into a situation where you feel like you're at the whim of the economy. Oh no, the gas prices are up. The inflation's going up. Did you see the market? The, and, and you end up just getting it sucked into this daily vibe. You can make a ton of money when inflation is going up and it doesn't mm -hmm. matter, you can make a ton of money when when they're, you're in the middle of a recession. Sometimes those are the, those are the very best opportunities to make money. Absolutely. So I, I want to separate people from the state of the economy. And if you find yourself, yeah, we're not doing that well because the economy is really rough. It's looking like we're going to face a two-year recession. It's lo looking like it could be a depression. When I hear that, when I hear that, it, I, I feel a disconnect with your own power and possibility. It is. It is truly giving your power to something that you have no control over. Exactly. And, you know, looking, just looking back at the last few years, how much money was made during the pandemic? Like <laughs> that was probably one of the most um, 
detrimental, traumatic events that most of us have lived through. And there was so much money made. Mm -hmm. My business has grown over the last three years. Um, So is it the economy or is it you trying to find a resource or a solution that people need? Because money's still going to change hands no matter what. Even looking at the Great Depression, that's when uh, um, prohibition was still going on. People were spending money hand over fist on alcohol and risking getting uh, arrested, (laughs) right? right? But there was no, there was no shortage of people going out and spending money on alcohol when the entire world or like nation was shutting down. So there are going to be people that are still spending a lot of money on a lot of things. Is the solution that you provide one that people find valuable enough to want to spend their money on or invest their money on during a rough period of time. That's I, that's really what I think it comes down to. Are people going to be buying frivolous things that are meaningless and don't provide value in their life? Probably not. Are people going to be buying things that are really important that help them through the time, through growing themselves, growing a business, creating new levels of security for themselves? I, you know, I think that I don't know. I try not to look at stuff like that. Although I did check the price of eggs today and I was like, wow, <laughs> damn, why are eggs so expensive? Yeah, it, it's true sometimes when you do that. But so the the final thing I wanted to ask was uh, for people that are saying, okay, I, I believe you, Brian. I want to be an entrepreneur um, and everybody's going to go to breeseely.com and, and I'll give you a link here in a second. But the, but the question is, when they say, I, d- I don't really know what to do. I don't have any ideas. I don't, I'd love to be an entrepreneur, but I, d- I really don't know what I can do. Um, I want people to understand the infinite possibilities available to them as entrepreneurs. And there's so many different businesses they can start. Tell me a little bit more about that. When you feel like you're blocked, like you really don't know what kind of on- entrepreneur you want to be. So the thing that I recommend, and, and I recommend this exercise in a lot of different scenarios and a lot of different situations. And the reason is that it gets your mind thinking past the obvious answers. So um, before I say the exercise though, I also just wanna drop on here. I know a woman who is a bridesmaid for hire. Her business is literally that women hire her. They pay her to fly around the world and be their bridesmaid. So for anyone, and I will rewind as well back to, um, I forget what year it was, but the Cards Against Humanities guys literally sold cow poop and they made a million dollars on the internet selling cow poop. So if you think that you have nothing you can offer people, I just want to remind you that there are people making millions of dollars off selling cow poop on the internet. And there's a woman who's literally a bridesmaid for hire. So you have some sort of skill that someone will find value in. Again, you might not find find value in it because it comes easily to you. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to sit down and I I want you to write 50, that's 50, five, zero, not 15, five, zero, five, zero different ways that you could make money tomorrow through selling some sort of service or product or offering 50, five, zero. Now the first 10 or 15 are going to be all of the usual suspects. I want you to think past those. I want you to look at all of your job experience, everything, even from oddly enough, I'm now an Airbnb host. My first job uh, straight in high school was, uh, I was a housekeeper for a hotel chain, right? So Oddly enough, 20 some years later, I'm now reusing those same skills to be an Airbnb host. You have skills that you have demonstrated in your life that you can monetize. And I don't know what those are because it's your journey. If you're interested, I can, I help walk people through this exercise, but sit down and write out five, zero different ways that you can go out and make money tomorrow. And when you hit 20 and you get stuck, I don't care. I want you to keep going. Exactly. 
it's really the, the those last 30 that you have there's some beautiful nuggets once you get past all the other stuff i actually helped a friend do this and we got through the 50 and it was idea 51 that she ah. ran with she did ten thousand dollars in sales in under a week from idea 51 oh wow that's amazing so everybody needs to check out breeseely.com that's b-r-i s-e-e-l-e-y and you have an amazing course everybody needs to check it out activate your most profitable year and you can find that at breeseely.com forward slash reality once again that's breeseely.com forward slash reality i will have a copy of the link in the description Bree is amazing and if you're pondering getting into entrepreneurship but you're struggling with whether or not to do it watch this video again and then Contact Bree. She is a coach. She helps people like you. You're the person that needs help. She's here for us. And we, if we can overcome this block that limits us and makes us think that we are just employees for some other company, but we are gods that can do anything that we want, then we can do this. And you are an entrepreneur out there. Whoever's listening, you can start a billion dollar business. Just let me know when you reach that first billion. I want to know about it because I can't wait all the messages I'm going to be getting from all the amazing millionaires and, and, and so much wealth is about to be gained by so many people. So thank you so much for coming on, Brie. And thank you so much for having me. You are an incredible interviewer and I just feel so blessed to have been I'm, in this I'm conversation. Honored, I'm honored to do it. It's so much fun to talk to you. It didn't feel like an interview. It's talking about <laughs> stuff I really am interested in. So thank you so much. And welcome to the Reality Revolution. We return you now to your local announcement.